Watch Symposium. I'm Austin, and we're looking at an Omega Seamaster. This belongs to Marcelo. And look, guys, you know I'm a fan of Rolex. And I want to come at this as objectively as possible, and I did when I handled the watch. But I've got to be honest, when I touched this watch, I was shocked and appalled and slightly amused. And I told Marcelo, I said, if you had handed me this watch in Thailand and said, yeah, I got this like at a shop, I would have cringed and said, dude, you got a fake watch because it's that bad. And again, I want to reiterate that I am a fan of Rolex and a lot of people might say I'm biased, but I really am not trying to bag on this watch. And I'll, I'll give you an example. And Marcelo, can I just see one of those uh, Seiko watches? In fact, show me both of those Seiko watches because both of these I was thoroughly impressed by, okay? Absolutely and completely impressed by this watch. And also by this watch as well. That's not to say that I don't have any complaints, but bezel action, quality feel, just really quality. So uh, we get to the Omega. Okay, now that that is out of the way and, and you know I'm trying to be as unbiased as possible, uh, where do I start? Let's start with the bezel action. And okay, the sound is funky, it doesn't sound good. And when it comes to Rolex watches, it's almost like, it's almost like there's a softness, right? There's a softness as you go around. There's no softness here. And the whole thing vibrates and rattles and it just feels so cheap and light. Honestly, if I were to get something from you know china like for like 25 dollars and and it, i would expect something like this another thing that you cannot show them is there is a lot of comments about the loom comparing to the Rolex we're not going to get into that today yeah. but i'm just i i just got to say this is out of all the bezels i've turned today the seikos and the rolexes this is the worst and and i just or really really mean that so. okay uh, the tutor as well yeah the, this is the worst by far. This is so unsatisfying. It just, I would hate to use this. Now, this was the second thing I noticed. Okay, the crown was the other thing I noticed. And and it's a little crown. You don't feel no resistant. Why no sound? <laughs> no sound. It's got a, there's no sound. The I gotta be honest, the Seiko's had a better wind. And look at that little stem, that weak little stem in there. Look at that. Uh, please change the time. Uh, uh, play with the Hank, the watch. Oh, okay, did you see the way it jumped? All right, mm, let me just look mm. at that for a second, okay. Okay, it didn't jump that time. I mean, that's something that Rolex does. Uh, they, they tend to jump sometimes, mm. so I don't want to be too hard on Omega. Okay, I, you know, I don't have a problem with that, okay? But I do have a problem with that little stem. Mm. That little stem is, is weak, okay? And it just, this is too small. It doesn't feel substantial, it doesn't feel strong. And when I screw it down, oh my gosh, when I push it down, it, it, it feels it cheap. Back. One of the things I love about modern Rolex watches is the way the crown squishes into rubber. You can just feel it. Now this, this there is a squishiness here that I feel like it is fully uh, waterproof. Okay, so I, I feel confident you could, but it just feels, uh, so much inferior to, honestly, five-digit Rolex watches. I mean, look mm. at that. Look at that stem. That is just pathetic. Mm. That is pathetic, and that's a pathetic little crown. Mm. And does it do the job? Yes. But I would bet money that you could 
take this watch, a five digit and a six digit Rolex into the water every day for the next you know, 10, 20, 30 years, this would be the first one to fail. I would almost bet on it, okay? Because I don't see how this would work. Now, will, will it work right after a service and, and within warranty? Yeah, but I feel like this is inbuilt obsolescence, meaning they know they could have done better, but they thought, okay, we don't need to do better. We just need to do, what? what is the warranty, five years? Uh, five years. Oh man, I hope Rolex never does this because I can feel the inbuilt obsolescence. I can feel that it's good enough for a few years, but not nearly good enough for uh, 10 or 20. And, and also one more thing, uh, Baron Jack also owned this watch and he said uh, regarding Rolex that make the un anti-reflected uh, coating underneath, this one make a double reflected coated. And because uh -huh. of that, the reflected coded in the, in the top does uh, scratch and does the uh, run off and then the watch look like shit okay all right well that's that's another thing that's sort of beyond the scope of what i'm talking about but mm -hmm. take note of that viewers what i'm really focusing on in this video is really the tactile aspects of this watch and and i think you really have to trust your fingers and your fingers can tell you a lot about how things are put together and when you feel this and you hear it, it just betrays a cheapness that was very surprising to me. And I feel, oops, I overshot it. And I feel the same way about, there's a little bit of pullback there maybe, but we'll forget it. That's not really the issue here. It's not pullback, it's, it's just the overall feel. And that crown, that crown is so sad. And I can't believe this is a, an Omega Seamaster 300. I mean, this is like the top of the line and this is what Omega is doing. And look, let's just step back for a second and say Omega is a company, all right? And they want you to service their watches through them. Um, they wanna make good watches, but only good enough to surpass the warranty. And look, this is a watch that's good enough to surpass the warranty, but nothing more than that, nothing more than that. And, uh, and I think maybe that's inbuilt obsolescence. You know, Rolex watches are really well built, almost too well built. You know, they, they run for decades, it's reported. I wouldn't do that, I would have it serviced, but that's reported the way it goes. And I think Rolex wants to maintain that, and I don't think they want you to do that to their, to their watches, but I think their watches, you could do that too. And every one of Marcella's Rolex watches, and I've got one right here that I've handled today. You know, every one of these watches, you could get in the water and dive and 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 put it in water for decades and decades and decades. I I'm just so confident. absolutely. I just don't feel like you could do that for for this watch. I, I feel like again at the five year mark, you'd be having to kind of worry about it. And and I think Omega knows that. Uh, Look, this has really changed. The big my... show off was the back display that you can show. That ah. that uh, comparing to a Rolex that doesn't have a back display, right. so what? But uh, regarding the back display, the the rotator uh, to charge it is noisy, like a very cheap. It watch. is. It is. It, yeah, that's another thing. But that's uh, that's. All right. Can you hear that? Yeah, um, that's what I was hearing, and uh, wow. By the, by the way, just for you guys to see something. Okay, nothing. So the the Cermit, you can't hear anything. And and look, with the new 32 <laughs> movement, with the new 32 movements, I mean, I've, I've heard you, you, you kind of can tell it's moving. I don't know if you could hear it or feel it or whatever. Um, and so that's all right, because this ball bearings in here with the... 31 movements, they're dead silent. I mean, they're dead silent. You cannot hear or tell anything. Um, but of course, they don't have ball bearings, and so um, that comes with its own set of problems, and a big old shock could, uh, could break the rotor. But it's really silent. This thing, I mean, the sound feels like something you would get out of a, like a, a Chinese watch. Okay, so this is the first time I've really, really done a deep dive and, and a really a deep feel into a, a modern Omega. And wow, I am, I'm appalled. 
like I said, I'm amused because I'm not an Omega guy, and I and I feel like I made the right choice. Um, Austin, by the I, way, I, I, I'm I'm taking pleasure and mirth in how bad this watch is. I got to be honest, okay. But at the same time, I'm being very objective about it, and I don't want you to think I'm I'm saying these things because I have an agenda. No, I really believe what I'm saying, and I, I just point back to those Seikos. Uh, they they they're so good. They were fifteen hundred dollar watches, but this is a six thousand dollar watch. Austin, I'm, I'm, I'm dumbfounded. Austin, I have a question. Go for this it. This watch is uh, selling in a discount uh, today in a secondary market between uh, five to four grand. Even, Not worth it. Even four grand, you wouldn't pay for it. Marcelo, my Hydronaut is so much better feeling than this watch. That's a two thousand mm-hmm. dollar watch. Wow. This feels like a thousand dollar watch. Again, yeah. I mean, the Hydronaut is like a solid tank beast of a watch compared I, to this I thing. I think a Hagenite is, is still very much understated. People I can't don't believe even know somebody that. would pay... Mm-hmm. What is the cheapest you could get this watch for? Uh, you can get about uh, a little bit above four grand. This is actually the uh, cheapest price. Four grand. Sell it. Yeah, yeah. My God. Well, let me ask you one thing, Marcelo, and how accurate is this watch? Uh, actually, it's quite accurate. Okay. All right. So maybe <laughs> maybe they put all their heart and soul and effort into the movement, but certainly they yeah. didn't into the tactile qualities yeah. of the bezel. And you saw the watch uh, drop several times, and and I don't care. And and it's pretty much uh, resisted. It's a very kind of uh, a, like like a very fancy G Shock. You actually do do. He can take stress by uh, throwing the watch down. Well, I'm glad you bring that up. Okay, I'm glad you bring that up because that is important. And look, we're talking about a mechanical Mm -hmm. watch, and that's one thing that Rolex and five-digit Rolex watches cannot take. And so I'm glad you bring that up because you dropped it earlier and you didn't care, and it probably is not going to change the timing. (laughs) And so maybe every bit of goodness that we can say is, is in the movement. And maybe if you see or say or believe that the movement is every bit of the important aspect of the watch then hey maybe maybe this is the watch for you but guys let me know what you think i i I just can't quite believe how underwhelming this is i mean this is a modern watch and it feels like uh something out of china so in essence terrible feel as far as the tactile aspects of the watch really underwhelming but apparently pretty accurate and you can take a beating. So that's the Omega Seamaster 300. Let me know what you think. Take care. Thanks for watching. See you next time.